episode is brought to you by Mafia 3. Family is who you die for. Yeah! We are doing this. What is happening, Screen Junkie Central? Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, Andy. How? Can you believe this? It is in full effect. This is day, I don't, this is day nine of Comic-Con. Feels like it. Oh yeah, we've been oh uh, we've been uh, talking all day, drinking all night, and then repeat. That's it. That's it, and it's insane. Costumes. I love your costumes, sir. What are you? Yeah. Uh, guy with a Hulk shirt. Guy with a Hulk shirt. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Gotta love it. Oh, Andy. So we are about to talk to some of the cast, creators, writers of one of the great animated shows, one of the funniest shows in the history of television, Family Guy. Hell yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm pretty pumped about that. I'm pretty pumped. I think they're here. Let's quit talking and let's bring them out. Yeah. You with doing this, Al? Absolutely. Tell them who we got. Please welcome to the stage, Alex Borstein. <laughs> AKA Lois Griffin. Oh, uh, wherever you like. You are queen, we are your subjects. Uh, Mike Henry, cast, writer, producer. Also, you know him as the voice of Cleveland. Another member of the cast, a writer, producer, many voices on Family Guy, Alex Sulkin. Writer, executive producer, voice actor, Steve Callahan. And producer, Rich Appel. You guys, we are hashtag blessed to have you here. Uh, super excited. Oh, we have excited. one more. Oh, not on our list. John Viner's here. Come on out. Actor, John. writer, producer, Take John Viner. John, sorry about that. Someone's going to get fired for not having your seat there. Just, and it's probably me. He's not wearing uh, pants. So you guys, uh, happy Comic-Con. Uh, Thank so you. How many, how many Comic-Cons have you guys collectively done? Or do you do a Family Guy panel at Comic-Con every year? Or uh, talk to us about your, just your Comic-Con experiences. I don't remember. We get so completely shit-faced. <laughs> it's just a blur. I don't know. No, like, I don't know, 10 of them? I am so blazed right now. <laughs> just kidding. I, I don't know. I think this is 10 or 11. We've done, it, we've done it every year for, like, I think 11 years. Yeah. We're old. I had a full, I had an app run. We just got it. Um, and uh, how, how many, so how many seasons has Family Guy been on the air now? Go on. 14-ish. 14. -ish. Yeah. 14. In, 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 it's been on for like 15 years, but we're always like a year ahead. Are 14, you... that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> how long do you think, like, how long do you want to go? Like, are you, do you, are you trying to compete with The Simpsons? Do you think you can out outlast them like it's amazing and it'll be impressive uh, what's your what's your feelings on it well we're more than halfway there so i think it's going to be pretty easy to <laughs> many, many of us bought Lapple. houses that were too expensive so we're hoping that this continues yeah but so do you see like an end in sight or do you do, want to just do it forever ever i would love to do it forever so so long as the stories are fresh and funny and they are like every table read i show up and still like pee myself a little, not from childbirth because I had C-sections, but because the scripts are really freaking funny. So you pee out of the scar now? I pee out of the scar and my, nip and my nipples. It's so weird. Wow. Okay, um, and and there's the other, and Good there's morning. a story. Um, I think uh, peeing out of a C-section scar would be a great joke on Family Guy. Done. <laughs> uh, and well, Quagmire could do something with a C-section scar, right? No. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, your, um, your minds are going So there. will you go on record saying that your goal is to crush The Simpsons? No, no. we want to oh, okay. join them. Yes. In uh, what, infamy. What is, crush. So, what, what, is, what is the key to that kind of longevity? Because like, that's, that's an amazing run. What would you say you owe that to? Kale. 
<laughs> I'll say because uh, we started in 98, 99. So Stewie now would be what? How old? 17? <laughs> 18? So the, the characters don't age. So we can keep going forever. Very How do you true. keep it fresh in the room? Like, because I imagine it is tough sometimes. Like, because I even Simpsons has made the joke of we, uh, you know, they did it. We, there's they've done the plots again. Like, how do you how do you keep from making sure you don't, you know, because you guys are such, so good at it. But like, how do you? Is there a process to making sure? No, we did that. We can't do that again. Don't we just do it? We just yeah, go we ahead get, and do it. We, we've sometimes gotten halfway through breaking a story, and then someone says, wait a minute, in season six, we did exactly this. It's usually this guy here. Yeah, Steve, like, yeah. Steve knows all of our stories. And Steve will so. give you the episodic number and the act and the minutes. I have a Rain Man like mine for, for that particular thing for some reason. It used to be early on that we would be thinking up a story it is and we'd go, oh no, the Simpsons did it. Or, you know, and now we have to worry about that and we have to worry about us having done it too. But we, we, we used to worry talented... that King of the Hill did it. What's that? We used to worry that King of the Hill did it. Remember King of the Hill? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we got, we had a, our first executive producer, uh, David Zuckerman, wrote for King of the Hill, so he would yeah. say, well, no, King of the Hill did. Hey, Mike, do you know that Rich ran King of the Hill? Did you run King of the Hill? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make this all about me. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. So do you we'll, know Mike Judge? We will, we, we will steal some of those stories. But, you know, you, uh, the world gives us new stories. I mean, this coming season, we have a story where Quagmire discovers Tinder for the first time, and, you know, and he kind of becomes this shut-in golem who's swiping everything he can possibly find. And, you know, Tinder didn't exist years ago, so we're just hoping technology and, will keep giving new stories. And there's a big musical number about how gross Tinder yes. is. Yes, and Cleveland sings so. in, the, in the number with Peter and Joe. But we also have a Thank very you. talented staff of writers who, you know, we have to give a lot of credit to those people who are not here because we have a, a large, talented group of people who come up with these stories. And I think because of the history of the show, having been canceled and brought back literally by the loyalty and, and willingness of our fans to spend money on DVDs and things like that, we take that responsibility very seriously to keep the show fresh and fun and exciting for the fans who, you know, for many of us, gave us our jobs back. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you guys, what, one thing I love about Family Guy, it's th just the show seems to be fearless and you really just push the limits of comedy. Can you uh, just elaborate on any times where standards and practices might have been like, oh, that went a little too far or something that maybe didn't make it to the air because y you guys, it's wonderfully edgy. Well, and to follow up on that, I remember reading something from uh, Matt Stone, Trey Parker, like they'll always add stuff that's even worse to distract them. Like, do you do that trick too? So we used to, I feel like we used to think about doing that, but you know, there was the Weinstein episode that didn't air originally and then aired after we were brought back. We had a great uh, long bit about Pat Tillman that maybe people have heard about. Pat Tillman was a football player who uh, valiantly volunteered to fight in Afghanistan and was killed um, by our own troops. And uh, we had a very long bit about that where Peter was like the sergeant of Pat Tillman's platoon and just kept giving people orders, or he kept hearing the orders and misinterpreting them of like, okay, so we'll, we'll go and take that bunker, and then we shoot Pat Tillman, and they're saying, no, 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 we don't shoot Pat Tillman. That's not what we do. And wow. he just kept hearing the order that way. It was a really long, funny bit that I think was ultimately taken out, but it was animated, and I believe, like, Pat Tillman's family yeah. saw it and, and loved it. Yeah. Which, uh, but that, how did they, that comes to How did to they mind. see it? Um, I, I it may have appeared on as a DVD extra or okay. something like that. And I remember standards when uh, there was a, an episode where they went to the future and Meg was now transgender and they wouldn't let us say adedictomy. She had an adedictomy. Addict <laughs> so Do you remember the Dirty Sanchez one? Which I loved. I, that was my favorite story because we tried to put in the reference to Dirty Sanchez. Everyone know what a Dirty Sanchez is? What is it, Alex? I'm going to give you a minute to Google. <laughs> and then later Mike, Mike and I will show you. Um, <laughs> you be Sanchez. But they, would, <laughs> they wouldn't let us do it, and so we kind of like bent around it and called it a Muddy Ramirez. Oh, Which I so love. I love that it like brought us to a new piece of language. Yeah, that, that's more of a vivid picture. Right? And yeah. then there was a time when we made up a word uh, that was a stand-in for something Clemen. really filthy. It was Cleman. 
right? right? And they, were, they didn't want us to do it. And we said, well, it doesn't mean anything. We've made, you know, and then it ended up on the show. And then as a result, ended up on Urban Dictionary. So then when we wanted to use it later, they said, well, no, you can't because now it has a definition of this really horrible, gross thing. We but we're, well, we created that. <laughs> so it, we, you can go around in all kinds of illogical circles. You've expanded the lexicon. Wow. It's um, like that, spontaneous genetic mutation on our show. That's, that's amazing. Um, and uh, wh when was there, what was the first time, did you guys ever like get in hot water for anything like early on where it's like, oh, uh, we better watch our step or was it always just let's push, push, push right yeah, from the Seth outset? Seth set the tone. He just, if it's funny, we're doing it. There's no agenda. We have offend everyone, which hopefully means we offend no one, really. Yeah. I mean, it's just we make any joke and that's, we've never played it safe. Um, I'm just curious from the writing standpoint, like, because uh, we, we have our writers, we do our honest trailers, and we always are trying to push, like, when does the joke end, or how, when do you go too long? Like, you guys have done some, uh, obviously, uh, iconic moments, the chicken fight, et cetera, where you just, you let the joke go, 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 and, and sometimes it's, then it's not funny, but then it's funny again. Like, where is the line, and how, do you guys have arguments about that? Is, do you all have to agree on the length of those jokes? I I don't know if we have arguments. The advantage of a show like ours is we get after the table read and you record it, we watch a rough uh, animated version of it and, and we react and we haven't seen it for two or three months. So you kind of can tell. And then three months later, we see it again in color. So you screen these things and you can tell if it does exactly what you're saying, you know, comes back to being funny. Or if we're tired, we just leave it as unfunny and go home. It's but very musical though. I, 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 you know, a lot of people on the staff are, are, are musical and comedy's rhythm and music and to me it just always feels like you have to find the right the right rhythm and it's, it's very musical a lot of oh. jokes are rhythm yeah, they're not they're they're funny for a second then they're not funny for a while and then they start getting funnier and funnier 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 it's kind of like sex <laughs> <laughs> and by the I end like it's funny hilarious sex. Uh, joseph is a clown <laughs> um, so is it always does uh, how often does then you shoot laughter at the ceiling <laughs> Uh, wow, you're a talented man. Um, Thank you. So, how often does like fan. <laughs> uh, how often does um, a joke like kill in the room or on the page, but then when it's animated, kind of just fall flat? How? Uh, tell me about uh, that process. You can tell you about all our unfunny, sad yes. experiences. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's sure. Honor. What what more could attract our fans than to tell them about our no, failed because, uh, swings? Because it's, it's such a consistently funny show, but um, it's it's a, a weird visual medium. You could do anything as possible. Well, the, pa the so, most painful uh, contortions, you, and I'm guilty of this too, is after either a table read with a cast or a screening, when there's a joke that you loved on the page and it just died, and you're back in there, and it's. The, o the only thing to do is to cut it. It clearly didn't work, but you don't want to, because in your head, you remember the laugh and that it once got, and you still like it, and you, and people are trying to negotiate in the room, and then it, it, we were all in there. 60 people did not laugh. Well, sometimes it's the personality of the writer that shines through, and you say, oh, so-and-so, that's hilarious. That's his personality, but it doesn't translate right. to the uh, Griffin. Or we tank it at the table. You know, you get the script, and you... If you weren't in the room when the joke was pitched, you don't know exactly how it was done, and you fail miserably delivering it at the table, and that sucks. Yeah, to when you read it, you've ruined the joke. When you get it the night before and you read it again, this I, I would I would say this differently as him. And I'd like to hear from John Viner. About what? <laughs> John and Alec, and I mean, obviously, Alex Borstein and Mike Henry are two great writers for Family Guy, and they're in the room a lot, and it's a huge advantage oh, no. to have. Cleveland and Herbert, you know, in the room, and Lois in the room. But John and Alec and Steve and a number of our writers also perform on the show, so you get exactly what you got in the room. See, I always go, I think the announcer would go, we now return to, and then they go, see, when you say it, it makes sense. But when, I, when other people what about go, we now return to, it's like, oh, Spoople? 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 What about ah, that guy? Yeah, no one, do people remember Fjord van der Plug? <laughs> No, one, See, one I'm, person. I'm the one percenter. It's like, you're like, you know who John is. No? No, I kind of do. <laughs> Did that one gag. And I was new Brian. I mean, these are all basically my voice. It's a good voice, though, isn't it, ladies? It's a really good ladies, voice. Ladies, uh, well, hi. You just want to lay well, back well, on the well, bed and have them talk to your crotch? Uh, it's a very uh, handsome voice. Right? Belgard and Tomek right here. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> See, we do Saint that. St. Day. <laughs> What's up, there Alex must be four score people's in here. 
Ah. I'm just curious, what's your favorite bit? Like going through now, 14, 15 years coming up, what, like what's the, can you pick one? Is there one that's like, that's my family guy can moment? Can we go down the Bart, line? Bart jumping over the gore, oh no. no. <laughs> Wrong show. I have one. It's uh, Peter and the guy, uh, Stewie, Brian, they've all taken Ipecac to see who's gonna puke first. <laughs> And it's one of those jokes that goes on and on and on, just vomit, 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 vomit. And then I get to enter, or Lois, I'm confused, enters with a giant pot and says, who wants chowder? <laughs> that's, I think that's my favorite. I think John Viner pitched that bit. Did you pitch uh, yeah. that? Yeah, I was part of it. Uh, don't uh, be modest, this guy. Well, I, I, but I also feel like we, we don't give enough credits because we have a great animation staff. And like one of my favorite things that I hadn't seen uh, fully done was when uh, Peter puts holes in the back of the uh, of the pet frog and yeah. then kills yeah. it. And the, the animators do such a good job of like creating the real gravity and just the the moments that like we we think of sometimes, but they actually have to do the hard work of, or they come up with. And it's like it's great to have your someone has your back comedically because at the end of the day, it's a very visual show. And and John is right because our directors in the. Uh, Simpsons Family Guy crossover, we had a Homer Peter chicken like fight. And we scripted a number of the things that happened in it, but Peter Shin, who's our supervising director and directed that one, turned in seven and a half minutes of this fight. And, you know, we probably only cut 10 or 15 seconds. I mean, we thought it would be three or four minutes, but he just, you know, took a huge swing and added so much. Can we talk about that for a minute? Because that was epic. Like, how did that, I mean, I've heard you guys talk about it, but for those who didn't, like, how did that, how hard was that to get? to happen, the Simpsons Family Guy This crossover. is the guy who made it all happen. Well, it, it, I had, you, he worked, I had been at the Simpsons, for, so I knew those Simpsons. guys, and I, uh, You worked at the Simpsons? <laughs> and I think, <laughs> did you, wait, did you go to Harvard? <laughs> Stop, Alec, my mother's not Were listening you, today. A New York State prosecutor? Uh, I was all those things, so. <laughs> is your but, best friend commissioner of the NBA? <laughs> in any event. Who was your brother-in-law? Back to cartoons. Back to cartoons. Uh, <laughs> when I spoke to Al Jean and, and Matt Groening, I think they knew that it was going to be done in the right spirit as, and it's true, a lot of the writers on our show were fans of The Simpsons. The Simpsons did, you know, uh, come first and do a lot, obviously, and uh, they let us do it. And, you know, maybe part of it was the story we pitched was that, you know, so much of Family Guy had been, you know, an homage, as Jim Brooks would say, to The Simpsons. But they were very game, and their entire cast came to our table read, which was really great. That was very exciting. That was a highlight, having them there and doing that together. Yeah, that really table cool. read was... And reading all your words, and it's, from what I've heard, they were like, yep, you guys do it, and you guys got to put them in the world. I mean, yep. that's such, that's got to, had to be such a fun... Yeah, and they only had all, Jim Brooks, Matt Groening, and Al Jean had two small notes for the whole thing, and one of them was we had a bit where Hans Molman ran through a farmer's market accidentally killing people. And Matt Groening said, I don't want Hans to be a murderer. And he said, all right, we, that's, we changed that's fair. that. That was fair. Uh, and one other small thing that I don't even remember. He said he didn't want um, Peter Griffin to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in one of the monologues, I'll just say, where Peter Griffin finally takes on The Simpsons after being dumped on by Homer. You know, we took a number of shots that Seth was so game about, uh, uh, about Family Guy. And it, there was one line about the demographic audience of The Simpsons. And I remember saying to those guys, yeah, if Peter has to fight back a little, you know, and your demo is a little you know, older than ours. Um, so we modified that one line. And I think other than that, nothing. Very cool. We actually have, uh, I think we have a clip of the, uh, the crossover episode. So let's uh, throw to a clip, shall we? This is exciting because it only aired a year and a half ago. <laughs> 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 and we're in the way. Be the last to see. <laughs> a little clip. There it is. Or okay, I got a great idea how we're going to find my stolen car. We'll throw a car wash free for stolen cars. And then when we find it, we'll actually charge the guy. Well, none of these is my car, but we promise these scumbags a show. Oh, man. Oh, it 
it gets better. And that was uh, a, a lot of the work of Don Bianchi, who's another one of our supervising directors on the show who helped Peter with that segment. Give the talk into the microphone, Rich. Dom Bianchi deserves credit for that. Isn't that nice? That's the main, that's the headline. Uh, Can you turn up your radio, please? Uh, what, was, it, uh, was it a difficult process uh, merging the animation of uh, the two shows, or was it actually well, even just like the scale, simple? like how did that, were they the, the right sizes? There were, you know, things that even people who work in animation wouldn't have anticipated, and David Silverman, who is there, was their original supervising director, came over and gave seminars for some of our storyboard artists, some of whom had worked, Peter Shin had worked at The Simpsons. Um, the colors had to be varied. It's not exactly the yellow of The Simpsons or the you know, skin color of- So of combining the guy. shows was so, sort of like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That was beautiful. <laughs> he, that that bit will continue after the <laughs> panel. <laughs> so um, obviously, then, uh, uh, Cleveland uh, uh, got a spinoff. If there are any other characters that you think, oh, this character needs more airtime, or I would love to see, or it's my dream to explore this character's universe just a little bit more, uh, who would it be? Does, does anyone have like a someone? You Herbert see? and Chris <laughs> moving in together, New York City. <laughs> Love them. I like uh, it. I don't know. Yeah, people always say uh, Quagmire. You know, I, I always heard when Cleveland was coming out that, you know, people also thought Quagmire should have a, a spin-off. Has it people never came up? Like, never, never actually wanted to pursue that? I think uh, Cleveland is sort of a, a richer, deeper character than Quagmire, who seems kind of one-note. There's four seasons out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you really needed five. <laughs> Four's all right. <laughs> and the opposite, like the Simpsons just killed off a character. Is there one character you would kill off and get rid of forever? Maybe Herbert? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, How the about nice the redheaded is... bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you don't really you need to... I mean, I, we have killed off characters in the past, but, you know, in the world of animation, you can just sort of ignore them, just kind of never come back to them again, and they sort of die by, you know... Can we talk about that, though, for a minute, when Brian was hit by a car and killed? The backlash online, the, the names that I was called on Twitter because an what animated character... <laughs> it started with C and ended with T. Wow. Carrot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, people were so upset that Brian was dead, and I believe it was the same day or week that like Nelson Mandela passed, and no one gave a shit. I remember but that. Brian it was really died. It was madness. People lost their minds. My well, favorite way, thing: though, there, was, there was a report. There was a columnist in the L.A. Times, a legitimate big newspaper, that hated it and doesn't like Family Guy, and came out with a column when Brian returned and said the writers responded to fan outrage in a craven manner by immediately bringing Brian back. And it, was, it took us 10 months to animate those exactly. episodes. <laughs> it's not like we quickly draw something new and put it on the air two weeks later. I, it was, yeah, it takes like a year for our, each show to be made now. Isn't, that, isn't it closer to a year? It's a little over yeah, a year. I, I, I look at it too, though, in a more positive way, which is I think that you know, we all expected there would be a reaction. We didn't expect that there would be that magnitude of reaction. But we took it as a sign that people really were, had, had over the years gotten so attached to these characters that there was genuine uh, upsetness when he, when he passed away. And so I think we kind of took it as a sign of, wow, people have, yes, we do, you know, a lot of wacky gags in week in, week out. But on some level, people really have come to appreciate, no, appreciate and develop some too, affection for the characters. You have to buy me dinner if you want to call me a cunt. That's just how it works. <laughs> and you know, you know, what, uh, you know what also caused other upsetness was the death threat that Steve received after that episode. Oh, I did receive oh a death God. threat. Yeah. The, so the night that it aired, I, uh, I still have it on my phone. It's really terrible and profane. Um, but someone called uh, and it somehow got to my voicemail at our office and left a really, really heinous um, death threat saying they wished I got hit by a truck and that Seth would die. And wow. So people are really good is, yeah. is sort of the lesson yeah. of this. I thought uh, you got not a all death that way. Threat. Yeah, we've gotten a little bit of that reaction when we uh, said ill things about DC Comics. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fans true. are passionate. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, you guys, uh, you know, 
you are uh, humble and modest people, but I have to say Family Guy has had such an impact on storytelling and comedy. And like, there's so many jokes. Like, uh, like you know, when I'm, I write comedy with my friends, we'll, we'll bring up something like, nope, that's a Family Guy joke, or they did that on Family Guy. Can you talk to us about the impact of your storytelling style, your cutaways, and just how you've seen that grow and yeah. how it's influenced comedy? It started too soon, frankly. I think that's why we got canceled, because Family Guy came out in 99, right before the internet exploded. So uh, I think the internet coming around was part of our success. And you know, you can sample a five second cutaway or a you know, 30 second cutaway or watch a whole act. And it, I mean, it's sort of tailor made for this time in media. So I think that's- The DVDs were really, really the thing that resuscitated us because people oh, I bought them. To... Yeah, I bought them. I heard, I, is it true that they expected to sell 100,000 box sets of the first season or two and they sold 3 million? That's that... what I, I always heard that yet yeah, at that point the show was just dead. It was 50 episodes that they were going to put in the garbage basically, but then they thought, oh, let's put this on DVD. They hoped they'd sell 100,000 DVDs. In the first year alone, they sold 3.5 million or something like that. Yeah. Also, I think that, you know, uh, in terms of, the, of impact, um, a show like 30 Rock, I feel like yeah. borrowed a lot of their format uh, from Family Guy. They do crazy cutaways and, you Scrubs. know. Scrubs. Absolutely. Yep. I don't know. I'm not sure about no, that. No, they would cut away on that. Really? Show. Yeah, it was Family yeah. Guy writers. But, uh, yeah, so 30 Rock, I think, definitely took uh, our template and ran with it. And I think, uh, ironically, the creators the Tina and stars... Yeah, <laughs> the stars of that show sort of poo-poo Family Guy, and it's ironic. Do that they? they? Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't even. I don't like that show. I don't either. I it's off the air. It's totally fair. They don't. They totally do the swipe away and do this thing. Absolutely. Uh, well, I know you guys. We gotta let you go, but this was such an honor to have you come and tell us the stories. Thank you so much, Eddie. Uh, season uh, fifteen. Uh, it's four, it's fifteen now, starting this fall. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Applause, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Preach. Thank you to the cast and writers of Family Guy. Sure. You guys, thank you. thank you for making us laugh. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, thank you for being here. And please and, and please stick around. We have uh, an, an American Dad panel coming up at 1115. You can stay right here, hang out, and we're going to have some fun. Thanks again to Mafia 3 for sponsoring this episode. To watch our previous show, click the box to the left. And to see everything from Screen Junkie Central, click the box to the right.